Okay, so the first thing, Olivia, is what are your thoughts about Wanaka Airport? Right, so before I ran for mayor and when I was thinking about it, I learned about, I was actually approached by somebody from Wanaka. I won't name who it was, but they said, we need you to run and tell me about the airport. So I said, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make one election promise. No to Wanaka Airport. <laughs> I mean, it's it's that simple, really. It's the community has made it loud and clear. And so I stand firm on that. Um, I've added a few election promises since then, but my first one was no to Wanaka Airport. Okay, thank you very much. Um, what were your what were the key learnings from the recent High Court ruling about Wanaka Airport in your view? I, I just it just shouldn't have come to that, right? So the um the council has one job. It's to represent the ratepayers and do what the community wants. It's really sad that it's had to be the community having to fight its own representatives to get what the community wants. That is so wrong. It's just not democracy in action. So yeah, that's that's my thoughts on that. Okay. Um, have you read the judgment? I haven't read the judgment. No, no, but I understand sort of what... Yeah, I, I just think it's appalling that it's had to come to that. I mean, I, my background is I'm a lawyer and I just, I see so much wastage of people having to fight their own council and having to pay money and that we're spending ratepayers' money to fight our people. It's just appalling. Okay. Um, and so how do you keep yourself informed about um, airport issues in this district? So I, I read about it. Um, I have followed Protect Monica on Facebook. And yeah, so I just I just follow groups. So um, I follow local media and Monica, uh, the Monica app, uh, Crux. I just, yeah, I just read local news sources and talk to people. So I talk to a lot of people in the Wanaka community. I have a lot of friends over there who are very, very concerned about the future of what's happening over there. Um, have you read the Martin Jenkins report? Martin Jenkins report, which are oh, the um, no on the airport. No, no, I haven't. I haven't read that one. No. OK. Um, who do you believe should determine the future evolution of Wanaka Airport? The people. It's 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 really that simple. And I'm, con I'm concerned at the moment about the current oversight of the airport in general. So what's happened recently with the statement of intent and it, we're just not getting the full picture and I'm very, very concerned. I'm looking at projected growth numbers. There's nothing past 2025, but it's going upwards. And my view on the whole airport expansion in general is, well, I've spoken to the people, right? And so I've done surveys and only 2% of people in our region want higher tourism levels in 2019. I mean, that just says it all, right? We, we do not need growth. We can limit growth. People say we can do nothing about uh, tourists coming here. Actually, we can. There's several levers that we can pull, and one of that them is saying no to airport expansion. Great. Okay. Um, what do you know about the Wanaka Airport Liaison Committee? I don't know much about the Liaison Committee, um, but I can, I just... I, that I can just imagine they're not doing their job. If I just cannot believe <laughs> that what, what what's happened with this issue. It's just for for a council to go against a community that's so overwhelmingly against something and to continue, it just blows my mind. So I can I can help you a bit here because the next question gives you some info that helps out. There, there's provision okay. made for the Wanaka Airport Liaison Committee, which doesn't currently exist in right. the QLBC district plan but it's right. never been established. So question for you is, if you were elected, would you promote and support the establishment of a Wanaka Airport Liaison Committee? Um, and, and how would you do that? I just, if, if that's what the people want, but I mean, my view is to just leave Wanaka alone and I, I don't want anything to have to liaise about when it comes to the airport, if that makes sense. Okay, yep, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> this is about recording your views, so that's that's okay, great. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, when you think about the airport, what do you see as the key issues or considerations which drive the airport's future? And I'm talking about Wanaka here. Mm, yeah, yeah. So 
With the airport, I mean, it's, it just comes down to growth and it comes down to people's appetite for, for that. And Wanaka is such an amazingly beautiful natural destination that I understand why people are so protective of it. We do need to protect it. If we're going to have growth, I'd rather have it over Queenstown because there's more appetite for it here, right? Wanaka wants to be left alone and I support that. So, I mean, it's just about listening to people. And yeah, so I don't think that the plans are good. I mean, the only thing that I think might be good for the future with Wanaka Airport is when electric planes, like small bodied commuter planes become a, become a normal um, way of getting around. And then I think that that might be acceptable to the community, but again, the community um, gets their say and I will, it, it doesn't matter what I think, it's, it's what the community thinks. Okay, so um, I know you'll probably answer this one in a similar way, but also interested in your view on this is what's your stance on carbon emissions and specifically what should QLDC do um, around carbon emissions? I think that, well, we're in a climate crisis, right? So the whole reason why I'm running is I'm running for the future of my kids. So that is to give them better opportunities for the future and all children in the region. But part of that is also doing the responsible thing with the environment. So we can't just sit on our hands and say there's nothing we can do there is a lot we can do and part of that is actually making a brave decision to limit tourist numbers with um by limiting airport growth and it, it, it's it's that simple I think that the numbers say it all that only two percent want more tourists um the the big tourism industry is very loud it has a lot of say and it's disproportionate to um, what the actual people want. I want to put community first and that means actually listening to the community and doing what they want. Um, you've, you've probably almost answered the next question I'm going to ask, but I have to ask this one. Um, what's your position on the proposed new airport at Terrace? Firmly against it. Firmly against it. it just We do not need to keep pumping tourists through our town we're, we're, our towns the whole region our infrastructure is already struggling with current numbers and tourism you talk about a social license and I think that social license has run out um and this is why this sort of comes back to why I'm so focused on economic diversification and why we need to care about it we need to do this so we're not reliant on numbers. It shocks me that the cost for catching a bus to Milford Sound is cheaper today than it was 10 years ago. And so it's just pumping numbers. It's a numbers game, but it's our kids that are going to have to deal with the ecological issues that come from just it's extractive on our environment. And we need to actually start standing up for that and making some hard decisions. There's going to be some people that don't like it. Some people want to just pump in the tourist numbers as much as they can and someone's got to say no and that person's going to be me. Cool. Okay. Um, final of the 10 questions, then there's a bonus question. Um, okay. What do you see as the role of the Wanaka Community Board and where should it fit within council? Once again, I've spoken to so many people, hundreds of people, um, about what they want. And it's, again, it's come back loud and clear. Wanaka wants more autonomy. Wanaka wants to have decisions made by Wanaka. And it makes sense, right? I'm pushing back against Wellington decision-making. There's a lot of things that I'm worried about taking decisions away from local communities and moving it to Wellington, like Three Waters is one example, which I find very scary and I am firmly opposed to it. So I'm a firm believer in keeping decision-making local. And so that applies to Wanaka as well. So what I want to do, if I am lucky enough to be mayor, is that I will give the community board more autonomy. There's some really high quality people that are running and I have full confidence in giving them more decision making. It's that simple. Okay, right. So I said there was 10 questions, but there's a bonus question. And that's really just to give you the opportunity to say whatever you want mm -hmm. to the people of Wanaka, bearing in mind our member base who will see this and we'll, we'll put it on some local 
sites as well. So sort of a minute or two of yeah. what you want to say, starting yeah. when you're ready. So I just want to express how sad I am with the community and the way that they've been treated. A lot of people are very, very frustrated. They've been let down by the council and that's where their money has gone to, right? And they're not being represented. The council seems to forget that the ratepayers are actually their customers and we're getting some pretty shoddy customer service over your side of the hill. So I want to change that. I am concerned that there's a disproportionate amount of spending in Queenstown and Monica versus ratepayer contribution, and that needs to be fixed. So I am hoping that the Wanaka community can put trust in me, and I'll be working really hard to build a relationship of trust and confidence because a huge, there's a huge amount of trust and confidence building to be done with local council because you, you've been let down hugely. I had a look at um, some full page ads in the Wanaka Sun from the last election and looking at all the promises that were made. Where are the buses? Yeah, it's, it's, so I can understand why the community is feeling really let down and jaded and, and not caring, but you should care because you need to get that old council out basically so we can get some fresh blood in there that actually cares about Wanaka. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your comments. I'm just going to stop the recording. Yeah. Uh,